Are we closer to the second Starship orbital flight attempt? A day after the Federal Aviation Administration completed the safety review of SpaceX's Starship, the private company Restac Ship 25 onto Booster 9 again. The ship, Squid, is also back face hugging S25. The overall process looked relatively smooth this time around. However, it's still not the full stack for launch, as the FTS has not been armed. Its purpose, and this may seem crazy, is to train the Mechazilla arm with S25. The ship has been stacked and destacked a total of five times so far. But you can definitely see how they've tweaked the process. Each time this process occurs, there's more data on how the tower, chopsticks, ship, booster, and more react to different loads and wind speeds. In any case, the stacking still means that launch day is fast approaching. According to Christian Devonport, a very trustworthy space reporter at the Washington Post, a November 6 SpaceX Starship launch date is off the table. But work continues and an attempt this month is still very much on the table, as SpaceX and the FAA work closely together. The meeting with Elon Musk and the FAA officials last month was cordial and productive. Now though the review is complete, Starship does not yet have a license to launch. The FAA must additionally, in collaboration with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, complete an environmental review. Starship will not be able to fly until that review is complete. It remains unclear how soon the review will be completed, though it is likely that Starship will fly soon after it is wrapped up. The Starship Super Heavy rocket is the most powerful launch system ever developed, according to SpaceX, standing at nearly 400 feet tall and designed to carry up to 100 people on lengthy interplanetary flights. What are the new and improved features of this new version, and how would it help with Mars colonization? Discuss everything about this in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St but before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. Indeed, the biggest goal that CEO Elon Musk has for Starship revolves around interplanetary travel. Musk's team has been working feverishly on his Starship rocket, a large next-generation rocket, that he hopes would one day transport humans from Earth to the Moon, and ultimately to Mars. Musk wrote in a post on X.com Thursday night. He also responded to a video showing the size of the starship on X and wrote, It's meant for making life multiplanetary. It invokes memories of SpaceX's iconic first Falcon Heavy launch, which not only propelled Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster and Starman into orbit, but also stood as one of the most remarkable moments in SpaceX's history. Expectations for Starship may even surpass those of the Falcon Heavy's debut. The initial orbital test flight on April 20 didn't quite capture the same magic, which has only intensified the anticipation for the upcoming mission. As the pieces fall into place for Starship's second orbital test flight, it's apparent that if successful, SpaceX is poised to shatter numerous records, including the distinction of launching the world's largest vehicle. Indeed, when it comes to size, there's little room for debate. A fully assembled prototype comprising the latest Starship and Super Heavy components boasts staggering dimensions. With a towering height of 122 meters and a 9 meter diameter, this colossal scale surpasses the iconic Saturn V, which held the title of the world's largest rocket for an extended period. Furthermore, Starship's total mass reaches an astounding 5,000 tons, enabling it to ferry up to 150 tons of cargo and accommodate 100 passengers on journeys into orbit. But even with the most potent rocket on the planet in their arsenal, Elon Musk's aspirations continue to soar to even greater heights. Musk just declared that the Starship is likely to undergo significant changes in its upcoming versions, potentially becoming 10% to 20% longer. To consider, if the 20% longer development happens, then the stacked rocket will be 144 meters long. Adding 24 meters would be over 60% of the length of the Space Shuttle Orbiter which was 37 meters long. The SpaceX Starship upper stage is 50 meters long. If this is made 20% longer then it would be 60 meters long. The Space Shuttle on the launch pad with its external fuel tank and side boosters was 56 meters tall. Actually, it's also a notable jump in size from previous versions of the rocket. When Musk initially outlined what was then known as the BFR in September 2017, the ship itself measured 46 meters and the whole vehicle measured 106 meters. 
when Musk unveiled the Starship 1 Malawian Quacha prototype at the Boca Shuka facility in Texas in September 2019. Complete with its new stainless steel approach, the ship measured its current 50 meters and the full design, measured 118 meters. That's not the only place where the Starship is changing. At the September 2017 event, the vehicle had a total liftoff mass of 4,400 metric tons. In September 2019, Musk revealed that the Starship 1 Malawian Quacha weighs 200 tons without fuel, 1,400 tons with fuel and stacked on top of the Super Heavy weighs around 5,000 tons. Musk then revealed despite the larger ship, this last figure will remain around the same. And eventually, we will probably see a 236 meters tall Starship. In 2019, he tweeted that the Starship's diameter could be increased, reaching 18 meters, surpassing the diameter of the Soviet N-1 rocket. If increased by finest ratio, Starship 2.0 will have a height of nearly 240 meters, double the version they are currently producing. According to estimates, in Starship version 2.0, the surface area, propellant tank volume, thrust requirements and mass will increase eight times. The total weight will be up to 40,000 tons. SpaceX will need at least 100 Raptor engines to help lift this monster. It would be interesting if this version appeared in reality, then it would be nearly three-quarters the height of the Eiffel Tower and the current Starship version would just be like a tiny guy standing next to a giant. Back with the latest change, Starship will be able to increase. Its payload. If the Starship payload area could be stretched by 10 meters, then the payload volume would increase from 1,000 cubic meters to 1,800 cubic meter. If fuel and Starship increased, then the stretched payload volume might only increase to 1,400 cubic meter. I wouldn't be surprised if Starship 4.6 years from now would be able to do 500 tons to low Earth orbit when expandable mode. The payload will include cargo, people, and fuel. The increase in payload is a potential cost saving solution for SpaceX as it could help optimize the number of flights. It will also help save time, making transportation to Mars faster and reducing waiting time. Most importantly, the increase in the payload of cargo and fuel will bring great benefits to interplanetary missions because each additional kilogram of cargo or fuel will be extremely valuable in space exploration. He said in October that the reason the rocket is so large is that it must be capable of comfortably carrying a large crew as well as millions of tons of construction equipment. Musk said at the time he could see an uncrewed Starship mission landing on Mars within the next three to four years, and once SpaceX can establish in-flight fuel transfers, Starship should be able to traverse the entire solar system. I'm optimistic that we can take a Starship that's fairly unmodified. I suspect you could land a Starship on the moon, Musk said at the time. You could go to the asteroid belt, the moons of Jupiter, the moons of Saturn. Getting to Mars, however, is only one part of a two-pronged problem. Once Musk lands on the red planet, he has to figure out how to survive on Mars, with the eventual goal of building some sort of society on the planet. The first step Musk told Joe Rogan on a recent episode of his podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, calls for a life support system. But over time, Musk said, you can terraform Mars. During the podcast, Musk highlighted the challenges that must be overcome to make Mars habitable. One major hurdle is the planet's thin atmosphere, which is around 1% of Earth's and consists mainly of CO2, or carbon dioxide. Musk envisions implementing a life support system to create a sustainable environment, while work is underway to change Mars' atmosphere. His approach involves warming Mars up over a prolonged period, which releases frozen CO2, densifies the atmosphere, and makes it more conductive to human life. Surprisingly, Musk suggests that global warming would be beneficial for Mars in this context. Another crucial aspect Musk addresses is the abundance of ice on Mars due to its greater distance from the Sun compared to Earth. He suggests that if Mars were warmed up, a stunning 40% of the planet would be covered in oceans, with deaths reaching a mile. The scenarios illustrate the potential for transforming Mars into a more Earth-like environment far better suited to sustaining human life. Musk acknowledges that his plan lacks specific details on how to achieve the necessary warming of Mars, but the guiding principles behind successful terraforming have been outlined. However, he recognizes that there are numerous other obstacles to overcome in the journey towards making Mars habitable. Transportation is one such challenge, currently being addressed by Musk and SpaceX. The Starship, a groundbreaking spacecraft under development, holds the promise of providing a viable means of travel to and from Mars. 
With the successful orbit of the Starship and its potential reusability, civilization could unlock a transportation method that would make multiple trips to Mars feasible and commence the terraforming process. A 2005 report from NASA's Ames Research Center found that the best way to make Mars livable for humans would involve injecting synthetic greenhouse gases into its atmosphere. If scientists were to inject 300 parts per million of a gas mixture featuring fluorine and carbon into Mars' atmosphere, a greenhouse gas effect similar to that taking place on Earth would occur. Over time, the ice would melt, as Musk said, adding more carbon to the atmosphere and further increasing the temperature. This process, scientists said at the time, could take thousands of years to complete. During Mars Up, however, and making it livable are two very different things. Chris McKay, a prominent NASA scientist shared in 2015, that there remain several unknowns. Relevant to warming up the planet. Mars does have enough water, that we know. But we don't know if Mars has enough carbon dioxide and nitrogen, he said. Nitrogen is probably the most serious, the amount in the atmosphere as nitrogen is much too small. McKay said at the time that it would take roughly 100 years to warm Mars up. However, McKay goes on to say, there are two ultimate sources of motivation and interest in Mars. First, it is the connection to the search for life, perhaps finding a second genesis of life on Mars. Then it's Mars as a potential place where humans can live and work. I am happy to have contributed a small bit to those questions, he added. I don't imagine I will see answers to them anytime soon. In short, Musk's grand vision of ensuring the survival of humanity by making Mars habitable is both ambitious and inspiring. Well, if you like this video make sure to give a thumbs up, and subscribe see you in the next video, thanks for watching. By the way are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app, Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the Talk Talk app, here down below.